And then you can go ahead and, and read, you know, verses 13 to 16, believers are salt and light, Christ fulfills the law. Just keep reading the rest of the chapter, love your enemies. Then chapter 6, do good to please God, the model prayer, you know, our Father in heaven, the model prayer. Fasting to be seen only by God, lay up treasures in heaven, lamp of the body, you cannot serve God in riches. It's not talking that riches in and of themselves are wrong. It's talking about the love of money, okay? But the, the more riches a person has, the more careful he has to be that their heart isn't in that. That still keeps God number one. Do not worry. And then chapter 7, do not judge. Keep asking, seeking, knocking. The narrow way. You will know them by their fruits. I never knew you. Build on the rock. And that's the end of chapter 7. I want to read, you will know them by their fruits. This is a great one for me too. A uh, great lesson, great reminder. It says this, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes, thorn bushes, or figs from thistles. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. And then we have... Um, if you go to, so that's Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, meditate on that. Read all of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but this is a great study. If you go over to um, Galatians, chapter 5, there's a section there that in my New King James Version is titled, Walking in the Spirit. It's chapter 5, verses 16 to 26. Verses 22 and 23 say, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Long-suffering or patience is the same thing, patience. Patience in trials, forbearance. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Right? Because how can be a law against these? These are from God, right? So the love of God joy in God, the peace of God, the patience of God, the patience of Christ, right? The kindness of Christ, the goodness of Christ, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control of Christ. Only the Holy Spirit can work these in us. So, how do you know if a person is a believer or not? You will see this fruit of the Spirit manifested in any situation. I mean, this is a challenge even for me. You know, I'm not claiming I'm perfect in this. But this is what the Lord has been developing in me more and more and more. That no matter what I'm going through in my daily lives, in my thoughts, in a parent circumstance or anything. You know, if, if I'm manifesting these, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Then the, the Holy Spirit is at work in my heart. Okay, and, and He's doing good heart. So this is how you know... Uh, you know, a true believer from one that calls himself or herself a Christian. Okay, you, you will, it's really an, about an attitude. It doesn't matter so much what we do, it's the attitude we do it with. The Lord will tell us also what to do, of course. He'll have a specific work for every believer that comes to Him after, you know, they get cleansed, purified, and healed. Definitely, He'll have a work. But all throughout this process, He wants to develop the fruit that is manifest in these nine characteristics, which is so beautiful. Peace. I have so much peace now. Most of my life I, I did not have peace. And I, this peace is so precious to me. I cannot trade it. I, nor do I wish to trade it for anyone or anything in the world. It's so precious to have peace. And that is just one of the characteristics. <sighs> and then the next section. I never knew you. This is also so important. Not everyone who says to me, Jesus is speaking here. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will 
of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, talking about the judgment day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So that's pretty powerful words. This is amazing. People that have prophesied in the Lord's name, that have healed others. I mean, the Lord's power was at work through them. Cast out demons of other people. You know, they did miracles, you know, through the Lord's power. If they were not obedient to the Lord in their daily lives, if they had sin, if they had habitual sin, I mean, once in a while, you know, if we're not, you know, perfect yet, we still once in a while may fall, may do something imperfectly. But if sin is a habit, like if we sin daily, you know, and we're, we're not going to the Lord to correct us and to make us pure and holy, um, you know, it doesn't matter what miracles, you know, are being worked through us. We will not enter the kingdom of heaven. We'll perish in the lake of fire. So these are, you know, I mean, the Lord's power can be at work. If you pray, the Lord can heal someone through you. But more important than the Lord's power, which is manifest through the gifts, is the gifts of the Spirit, is to have the fruit. The daily obedience, the daily walking in love, the daily walking in faith, in, with patience, long-suffering, with, with joy, with joy, all of this. And then Galatians, just feel free to read, I just read a small part, but just feel free to read all of Galatians. Okay, it's so just uh, six chapters, just six small chapters. And then go into Ephesians, the very next book of the New Testament after Galatians is Ephesians, chapter, chapters 4, 5, and 6. So Matthew, chapters 5, 6, and 7, all of Galatians, and Ephesians, chapter 4, 5, and 6. Okay, and just meditate on what you read. This is great teaching here. Uh, walk in unity. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, spiritual gifts. Here's talking about the gifts I mentioned. Each of us may have different gifts from the Lord. The new man. Do not grieve the spirit. Walk in love. Walk in light. Walk in wisdom. Talks about marriage, Christ and the and the church. That is the the old, the real marriage. And then, you know, what marriage between a man and a woman should look like as a result is has to you know the the ultimate example is Christ as the husband, the head, and his bride. He is a worthy bridegroom indeed. And then children and parents, bond servants and masters, the whole armor of God. And then a gracious greeting. Um, just wanna. Talk a little bit about spiritual gifts. It says at verse 11, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, um, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carry about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. How beautiful that is. Uh, but I was... Um, where was it? Oh, it's in Corinthians. I wanted to talk about these gifts because there is a little bit of a, a misunderstanding and even some conflict between believers within churches. Um, one second. Okay. In 1 Corinthians, because we each have different... Um, Different gifts. 
Okay. So, uh, just want to clarify something. I'm really combining a few videos in one. That's fine with me. Uh, I want to address some issues. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. All right? Uh, they put a title here in the Bible, Spiritual Gifts, Unity in Diversity. I'm just going to read verses 1 to 11. Now, you can read it yourself. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. That's true. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. Now, I met certain people I've heard, and you know, I've been listening to Pastor Doug Batchelor. And you know, he, he's talking about this. You will find his channel Amazing Facts on YouTube in one word. If you actually, you know, this is my YouTube channel. If you go to channels, you see one of the channels I'm subscribed to is Amazing Facts. That's Pastor Doug Batchelor's channel. So uh, I just want to point out about, you know, uh, these different gifts, prophesying, speaking in tongues, you know, some, you know, friends of mine, believers, you know, with, and I've had some discussions and I've heard this before and I have to say that I agree with Pastor Doug Batchelor. You know, they say, well, if you receive the Holy Spirit, you know, are you speaking in tongues? You know, and if you don't speak in tongues, um, you don't, you haven't received the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, I'm speaking in the Spirit now. Those that have the Spirit will recognize. Um, we each have different gifts, okay? Nobody has to speak in tongues, all right? There is... Um, Actually, prophecy and tongues, if you read the same book, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and then uh, further down, tongues must be interpreted, tongues assigned to unbelievers. It really says that speaking in tongues, um, you know, does not uh, bring glory um, to the church. What does it say? You know, I mean, it's, they must be interpreted because the whole point of speaking is so that it brings grace to the hearers, is so that the people are filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm, I'm not saying that it's a bad gift. No, it is a gift of God. But I don't understand what the whole fuss is about speaking in tongues. Okay, you, a person cannot make themselves to speak in tongues. You know, because this comes from the Holy Spirit. This is if it's a specific gift. It's not, there's no such thing, I don't believe there's such thing as practicing to speak in tongues. You know, it's fake. You know, this is not the true faith or gift here. So people have to be careful. This is something that comes from the Holy Spirit. And if I don't have the gift of speaking in tongues, all right, I don't owe you or anybody else an apology. This may not be God's gift for me. Okay? The only thing I have to watch myself on is being obedient to my Lord. So let's not get hung up. Or if a person doesn't have the gift of prophecy, or if a person doesn't have the gift of healing, you know, the Lord may choose to give one person a gift or some people's gifts will never be manifested that is not the point the point is if we have the fruit of the spirit and out of that an obedient life let's not get hung up on the icing on the cake right or on the dessert we have to take care of the main course meal okay the meat and potatoes which is the fruit of the spirit being developed in us so let's understand this correctly Okay, because many Christians say, well, if you don't have this gift, you're not a believer. No, 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 you can have gift, you can speak in tongues or pretend to, you know, and, and you can be on your way to hell because you're not living a fully surrendered, obedient life to Christ. So I have to address this issue. Um, you know, there's going to be people, you know, don't listen to anybody. 
you know, who's telling you, you know, you have to do this. You don't have to do anything. You have to go to Christ and he will lead you if you sincerely seek him. All right. So let's understand this the right way. You know, I'm speaking this as a true friend because as a true friend, I have to point out things, you know, um, in another place in scripture, it says, you know, these dissensions, contentions about the law, let it not even be named among you. You know, we're not supposed to argue about these things, but we should also clarify certain things that um, if this person doesn't have this gift and he has the other, you know, it doesn't make him any less of a believer or any less of a brother in Christ because you don't know how that person is living. Okay, you don't know. They, they could be living holy. They could be earnestly seeking the Lord. You cannot accuse a person, you know, based on what you see on the outside because you do not know his heart or her heart. The Lord knows. All right, so... You know, this is, you know, people that, you know, are, you know we're, we're new in Christ, we're babes in Christ, you know, we often make these mistakes, it's okay. The point is to not argue about this, it's not a, definitely not a cause to be divided, but we have to understand that God gives different gifts to each person. I think I've said enough, you know. Um, I don't desire the gift of speaking in tongues. I, I, I've been prophesied that I may have gifts of healing. You know, um, I know I'm an encourager in the Lord. I may even be, a, a, in a way, a bit of a teacher. You know, I have passion for the Lord. Uh, Doug Batcher calls, uh, calls uh, uh, you know, teaching prophesying, right? Because, you know, right now as I'm teaching, I'm prophesying. Prophecy re really, um, I believe the true meaning is you predict an event in the future. I don't think, you know, I have um, this gift, you know, I mean, uh, apart from the Lord. You know, if the Lord, is, it's all because of the Holy Spirit. We cannot make ourselves have a certain gift or develop the fruit without the Holy Spirit. This is God. As we seek Him, He chooses to impart to each one. We're all members of one body, so we're members of one another, right? Just like the eye sees, the mouth speaks, the nose smells, the ear hears, the hands have work to do, the feet, right, carry the brain and body around, okay? In the same way, we're members of one another in the Lord. Okay, so it's one is not more or less important than others. Okay, so everyone has a specific calling. Let's relax about it. Now the Lord to lead. Okay, nobody has to speak in tongues. Nobody has to prophesy. Nobody has to heal. We have to be obedient to the Lord and he will lead us. And then there is peace and focus on the Lord. And that way we walk. Okay, glad I clarified that. First and second Corinthians are amazing to get into too. Um, I find that you know they're tied in, I think, to the books of Peter. First and second Peter. Um, but in this video, I just wanted to uh, to encourage you to uh, you know check out Matthew, Galatians, and Ephesians for start, and then we can get into deeper things. You know, like, um, you know, like I just talked about, I just have so much to say. I, you know, I, I haven't taught on the Bible, you know, on YouTube, making videos in a while, and uh, I can't stop. You know, I, I didn't plan to say this much, but um, it's just coming out. So, um, what can I say? You know, this is, uh, if association matters, you know, if, if we read the Bible, you know, Daily, we indirectly we associate, you know, with God, His thinking, His ways, you know, the people that were obedient to Him, you know, their teaching. It's all the Holy Spirit, you know. So it's it's not just about knowledge. You're reading to learn or memorize something. Not at all, you know. It's about association because we become like the people we associate with. We become like the books we read. It's not the only book we should read, but I think you know. If you've come to the Lord every day for the rest of your life, read a little bit from the Bible, you know, or study it in, you know, audio or, you know, search a, a passage on, online, something every day. Be immersed in the Lord's way. That's what I say. Okay. Well, I'm glad you were watching and listening. I hope you were filled and encouraged. And um, I can only wish you a great day in the Lord. And may you be blessed as you sincerely seeking and walking with the Lord Jesus each and every day. Have a good one.